Hello everyone, my name is Promise Bell, CEO Promise Recording Studio. Welcome back to my channel. I'm always here to share new insights on how I do my jobs. All right, this is another insight for producers. I know you already know it. You will say, I know it already. There's no problem, but this is for those that do not know this or that will need this particular uh, video or this tutorial. This tutorial is about how to salvage your rough or your wrongly played multi-track recording and to do a better post production uh, without wasting time already the project is open and i'm working on logic pro x so that means you can do this on any daw it's just to understand your workspace and your workstation all right without wasting time let me just play uh the job to an extent please bear with me listen and i will also advise you to listen with an headphone on so that you can feel the depth or probably the weight warning the vocals are still wrong what was added was the instrument so Listen, thank you. Enjoy. Oh, yeah. Let me take it forward a bit. Uh, yes, get instructed. Let me take it to the last part. It's for a reason. I will explain later. I know you'll be wondering, ah, you played it so long, it's for a reason because I want you to actually understand and feel 
the sequence of the drum and how the drum went now uh, there are three things i want to share with you like i said this tutorial is how to salvage a multi-track recording that was done wrong so if your multi-track recording is okay if it's fine you don't need this tutorial all you need to do is just do a good post-production you can add some synths or there about probably add to the vocals to make it a bit fuller uh that is all you need but for a job like this that is badly done for example a multi-track recording or live recording there about where the engineer forgot to actually add some essential uh, parts of the drum mic like for example the overhead or probably the toms so what do you do in a case where the drum was wrongly played was badly recorded number two no before you do a multi-track recording or a live recording there are certain things the sound engineer must put in place like gating to avoid picking excess noise from the audience or probably the, the acoustic feedbacks so if the engineer is not that good if you are missing a kick for a live recording you have to do some high cuts so that it will not pick the high end of the environment or probably of any of the microphones and other instruments as a music producer or as a missing engineer if the recording is bad there is nothing you can do you are not god you're just here to make the things sound better this is how you can actually salvage that situation number one is to record with a loop you must record with a loop as you can see i recorded with a loop this is the original loop i recorded with in the song so after the live recording i just have to re-import the project back to, into a new project and start to rework on it now somebody will ask in a situation whereby you have different songs maybe like five songs with different time signature about or different tempo what do you now do you create loops for those different songs according to their time signature then obviously you're going to play the loop from maybe a phone or any device and that device is going to be routed into the digital uh, console when it is routed into the digital console it's going to uh, record alongside with your multi-track recording after recording that you have, you have to record the, the project uh differently yeah because obviously the person will be singing back to back you understand why they're singing you have to record track by track on the same uh, project when you are done I, I tell you the way i do my multi-track recordings after recording like five track uh, for example in a particular project like this i will just uh I'll just create my session like this export that particular track export it uh i will export all the different instruments that i need for example in this project i didn't need the drums the drums didn't go so well at all i didn't need the piano because the pianist was not so good there was no depth on the piano the progression uh was clashing with the bass guitarist i took the piano out of the project and played everything again as you can see that's why you can see them on midi tracks only the bass that is on wave now the only things that are original here are the voices which are not mixed at all what did i do i just have to track the song by putting my loop i took the old drums out of the project and resequenced the drum according to how the drummer played on stage that is why i have to play the track for you to at least listen to an extent and understand if you listen to the end part of the song which is what i also played it was exactly how the song was done at the end also it took me some time but it was worth it That's what I just did. As you can see, the project is sounding lively. I think it is good. Now, what's remaining is the mix and the mastering of this project, and it is good to go out there and uh, to work on the voices again. So, what did I do? I sequenced the drum. This is for those that have not sequenced on Logic Pro before now. It is simple. All you need to do is come over here. I'm using uh, the stock plugins. I use usually stock plugins on logic pro and including cubase i don't like stress so you come over to this part here it's called library click the library wait for it to open now as you can see i'm using heavy plus the plus here means that you can mix them individually as you can see so it's open just need to come over to the drum session drum kit click drum kit then you must scroll down here to select multi channel kits to choose the ones with plus the one with plus means that you can actually uh, mix each of the channel separately like what i just did okay let's open the drums this is the entire drum session let me play it for you to hear so this is my overhead this is my kick let me show what i did for my kick alone 
you can feel the strength of the kick i did three things here just three things like i told you i love using stock plugins and this is the stock eq from my logic pro i did a cut at my 10k area i just have to boost our uh, 1.5k area and i did a bit of cut on the 400 stroke 500 area so this is how it sound now the next thing i used here is a uh fab fitter compressor to add a bit of attack to the kick attack to the kick as you can see you can see my trash hood here and you can see the cut area is about 9.1 if you need this plugin i can also give it to you for free the last plugin which is the model of them all is called the ez mix let me open it this plugin you don't need to do any extra thing no too much effort all you need to do is install it open it come over to preset look for the particular instrument you want to mix or you want to work on for me it is a drum and it's the kick so i'll come back to drums and go back to the instrument session and look for kick and click kick so it will bring that only the kick uh, presets for me every component here are already mixed just choose the one that fits your mix if you can't see this instrument session right click on an empty space here and just uh just include it here let me put it off you can see the, the kick is a bit light let me put it on you can feel the weight on the kick then the next thing is my kick out of course you're working with logic you have your kick in kick out snare top snare bottom and all those stuff let me add the kick out listen that is where the depth comes into play let me put off the kick in you can see so this one has more attack this one has less attack put the two together and you have a fine kick so that is how the drum was actually mixed and mastered and the piano impeccable the piano here is a stock plugin also is a very nice plugin logic comes with great sounds originally you can see heavy and good the part also is a stock powerful part because the live recording was played with played just with piano bass and drums now this is a synth uh also stock plugins is called the restro synth look at it uh this is a guitar uh also also a stock guitar plugins also let me play so you can feel it Uh, is an acoustic guitar it's also a stock plugin uh, the next is called the 16 mm dream sequencer that's just to add flavor to it and this is my strings and lastly is my rising pad i don't joke with this rising pad so putting everything together for the intro you can feel it so uh, the bass is fine so this is how i just salvaged a live recording that was bad if i played the original uh live recording it was so bad of course i don't settle for less so this is how to salvage uh, a live recording that is bad you can actually resequence the drum you can even salvage a lead vocal that is badly done on stage you can go back to the studio and follow it like this and i know you are going to worry about the video if the video is done alongside with the live recording it is fine all you need to do is track the your original voices you can track the original lead that was done let me play this one for example you are, you are. so you go to the studio and you settle down and you start to revoice them one after the other alongside the old track so you can actually track it step by step it will take more time but you can it will be worth it so you listen to the first note you sang and you sing it along so that it can synchronize with your old voices and you can also do it better because at that point you are relaxed sometimes you know if you are carried away and this is always for singers that, that are not so tight that are not so sound you understand because if you are good you have to produce better on stage that is why, why you are paid or that's why you are called a professional 
singer or instrumentalist. Don't be in a rush to do a live recording. Number two, check for background noise from chords. Number three, always work with a loop. Do not record any live recording without any loop. That loop is to track the song so that in case there is a, a miss up somewhere, you can easily correct it and it will fall into tempo. If you work with a loop, you can also, for example, you know, if you are recording the entire back of vocals, we sing from beginning to the end. Not like when you are recording in the studio, you can record and just paste. So, but if your tempo is correct, you can cut the best part in the back of vocals that sounds so well, especially the repeated parts. Copy it and you can paste it and to sound more steady and more unique. That is the benefit of working with a loop to track your tempo. Uh, these are very important keys and important stuffs that you need to consider or look uh, checked into while doing a live recording. And as you can see towards the end, lastly, let me go to over to the end. What I did over here is what they did on stage. I just have to re uh, make a copy of that and listen carefully and mimic that, played it, and it sounded even better than what they did live on stage. Listen to it. Okay, there's one instrument I forgot to uh, solo, which is the brass synth. Synth brass is to just add power to some parts of the song, not all parts of the song. That is it. So that is how I do uh, my live recording, corrections, post-productions, and all those stuff. I know you will have a lot of questions in your heart, a lot of uh, questions here and there you want to ask. Please feel free. To put them on the comment section of course i always respond to comments i love responding to comments can have different idea about this please also put it in the comment section so that we can also learn from you no man is an island of knowledge thank you so much if this has helped you please click the subscribe button put up the notification bell so that we can signal you for a new video thank you so much i remain promise bill ceo promise recording studio I will see you on the next tutorial and I'm wishing you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year in advance.